to the limitation of my 3D printer, I have to divide the chassis into three separate parts. The side profile of the completed chassis will look like this. First of all, I have installed the shock absorber and the stabilizer arms on the rear axle. Here it is what it looked like after mounting both the shock absorbers and the stabilizer arms. I have further replaced the stabilizer arms with a much more advanced version to manage the space effectively at the bottom of the vehicle. Now coming to the front axle, first of all I have installed the upper stabilizer arms. Then I started mounting the shock absorbers. After mounting the shock absorbers towards the axle, now it's time to fix the whole assembly into the chassis. Okay friends, so let's continue with our suspension and transmission build. So here I have mounted the rear suspension and the axle into the chassis and the stabilizer arms are also deployed in position. So in the next step we will be installing the transmission system in the case because once we install the front suspension system it will be a bit difficult to install the transmission system. So first of all let's install the transmission system. Before mounting the engine into the chassis, let's fix the universal joint at both the ends of the drive shaft. Now this time the pivots are joined into the couplers into the universal joints with the help of M2 screws for better stability. Before inserting the second rack and pennant system, let's engage the case, the gearbox case into the chassis and fix it with the help of M2 screws. And now it's time to fix the second rack and vanier system of the right shaft.
Now it's time to fix the stabilizer mountings to the chassis. Mark the space for the screws and drill a 1.5 mm hole for fixing the stabilizer mountings. After completing the stabilizer mountings, now it's time to join both the UJ coupling units of drive shaft and the rear axle. Before that, I have to fix another set of stabilizer arms at the lower bottom of the axle in order to confirm better stability of the axle during the operation of the shocker assembly. the BS suspension is complete and fully functional as you can see shoulder is mounted perfectly it's fine like Now it's time to mount the front axle assembly at the same manner.
Now both the front and rear axles are completed. Now let's have a test run again. You can notice a very high rate of lag at the rear axle. We have to do some calibration at the rear axle to correct the thing. Here off the screen I have made few adjustments and calibration to the assembly. That is I have made a smooth angle of operation of the rear axle with the help of a shorter lower stabilizer arms which I have shortened by 5 millimeters. That resulted in the rear axle mounting make a smooth angle with the drive shaft of the gearbox. In the front axle, I don't have the option to tilt the axle assembly because at the front end, it is associated with the steering drive mechanism. If I tilt the axle, it will affect the smooth functioning of the steering mounting arms or steering ramps operation. So I have to increase the air gap of the front universal joint and the pivot. That will facilitate the smooth rotation of the rack and pinion joint towards the front axle joint. The shocker cylinders of the front axle were also changed to adjust the leveling of the vehicle. As you can see, after the calibration process, the jerky movement of the rear wheels were corrected and the rotation became smooth and efficient. So as you can see, our crawler is getting some shape and in the next episode, we will be doing the steering assembly mountings and further the body build. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed watching it. If you like the video and like the build, please comment on the comment box. Don't forget to subscribe and share the video.